In this video I'm going to present the trinomial model and some of the features of that model. I'm going to outline C++ code that I picked up from <coughs> Develop the website. That's a code that was developed by Fabrice Rua. And um, I'm also going to take a look at a few graphs and setting up a trinomial model in Excel. Um, the starting point is the trinomial model is lattice based. It's, it's very like um, the binomial model. It's similar in construction. The main difference between the trinomial model and the binomial model is that the in the original Cox Ross Rubenstein binomial model, the stock price could either go up or could go down. And we didn't allow for the stock price to move, stay at the same level. Okay, and the addition of the the trinomial model is that it provides for three movements, three branches extending from each node, and up, down, and stay the same. So, um, one uh, representation here that I have, I just picked up, took off um, Google, is again a simplified tree. The stock price can either go up can stay the same or can go down and from each node we can see that there there's more flexibility there's three pathways or branches extending from each node and that also means <clears throat> when we're doing backward recursion when we come back through the tree and valuing the option using backward recursion um, every node uh, will be uh, <coughs> estimated using the uh, three preceding nodes Okay, so that's something we'll keep an eye on. Uh, this is another formulation of uh, trinomial models. Now, just like with the binomial model, there's Cox, Ross, Rubenstein, there's Tian, and a few others. Um, uh, Hull also uh, has different specifications for U and D, and uh, that's uh, something that's available in the literature. So for the moment, I'm just going to focus on a simplified treatment of the binomial model. In part, I'm going to follow a little bit the um, setup uh, out identified by Espen Hoag. Espen Hoag, I better mention Espen in terms of um, his his book. Um, um, I like this book a lot, um, mainly because the explanations are relatively, relatively succinct and brief. And in each instance that a model is developed, a VBA code accompanies. So included in the book, there's a CD-ROM with uh, basically all the formula that are outlined in the in the textbook. And um, a large segment of the op main option pricing models are developed in this book. So it's a fairly encyclopedic type treatment of option pricing. Um, but for the trinomial model, Hogue also is going to offer us another way of um, pricing or off, offer a slightly more uh, streamlined, uh, dynamic way of, of implementing trinomial model. We'll look at that later. Uh, for the moment, the, the main thing I suppose to identify is that the in the trinomial, in the original setup outlined by Phil and Boyle, there was uh, up down and stay the same uh, stock price dynamic and then when we um, applied the probabilities which were important for backward recursion we had pu pd and pm okay and the these val these um formula here are consistent with the um what was developed in develop the code right um static model so the parameter inputs that then are used to generate uh, U, D, P, U, P, D, P, M and the formula here that are developed are consistent with what is here. Okay, so maybe just take note of that. U and D, M, P, U, P, D, P, M are estimated in the same way here as what I have for the code. Um, now, I'm I'm going to provide this code uh, underneath the video with a link, but before 
um, we do anything else, maybe just verify first of all that the code uh, actually is robust and consistent with um, uh, estimations that we're relatively uh, comfortable with. So again, the starting point here might be, I look at, this is Broad to Temple 1996, and their paper here was in terms of American option price valuations, new bounds, approximations, and a comparison of existing methods. And then I go to page, to table two, and table two we have some parameter inputs and if we take the stock price as being 100 the risk rate is three percent the volatility 20 dividend is seven percent and we use 15,000 steps uh, in our estimation then the value of a binomial this is uh, um, a binomial the last column here represents binomial output for 15,000 steps Using the binomial methods, uh, the value of that option with these parameters would be 9.066. I've run this estimation here um, in uh, using the trinomial code from Volupta, and I've got 9.065. Um, run it again, but the parameter inputs we might inspect are the same. Spot price is 100, exercise 100, risk rate 3. Q is 7, uh, volatility 20%, 3 year maturity. We're saying it's a call option. We're also um, identifying it as an American option. And 3000 steps uh, is taking us um, 1.6 seconds. So if we put it up to maybe 6000 steps and run it again, it'll take um, a little bit longer, of course. Um, but the value should still be in that region consistent with the Brody at uh, Brody to Temple. So we should be recovering 9.066 or a relatively close estimation. Okay, so um, again, uh, one of the issues here with this particular code is, and we'll come up with a solution for it in a moment, is that if we increase the step size, over a certain threshold and um, very often the compiler won't compile uh, part of the issue here is with this particular code it is a static representation of the binomial tree so we define a two-dimensional um, set of nodes and that sucks up a lot of memory and a solution to that is to use dynamic memory and define um a single dimension for the node so um a one dimensional tree with dynamic memory will generally perform better again i i do have a version of that maybe we'll just outline that this is a code that i've taken from uh, the hogue textbook and a vba code and then i've re-estimated now there's some differences um so it's not entirely like Hoag, but it's close in terms of what he's doing, particularly in terms of using uh, dynamic memory. And if I put in 6,000 steps here, it will estimate. It'll take a little bit longer, but I will be able to get an estimation here. Um, I will be able to output results for 6,000. Again, the, the value should be consistent with the 9.066 that we observed here from uh, Brody and the Temple 1996 um, and the value that I'm getting okay 9.065 there are 6,000 steps it takes four seconds the reason why this code is estimating better in terms of being capable of using the higher step size compared to the static code that I have here is because in this instance the memory we, we set out a static two-dimensional tree, whereas here with the um, Espen Hoag's type, type construction, again, the parameters are estimated in the same way, um, the BDTU and so on, estimate the same way, but we use 
um, a redimensioning array um, and that allows us to um, use memory a little bit more efficiently so we can reach the higher step size. Okay, so just getting back then to the basic um, model, the trinomial model. The, the trinomial model allows us uh, to model the stock prices either going up, staying the same, or going down. And we can see that as, this, the, as we increase the number of steps, one step, two step, three steps, four, uh, the stock price ultimately reaches this SU uh, to the power of four. And if the stock price goes down, the lowest value is SD to the power of four or SU to the power of negative four, in fact. And um, again, in terms of how Voluptum model the stock price, it looks like this. Um, they have a two-dimensional tree. And the initial stock price is um, modeled as an IJ array. So this is I, the first node is, the first uh, number here represents I, the second uh, J, so zero, zero. And then we come to IJ again. And um, so J is uh, one, and I goes from zero, one, two, three, and so on and uh, for four step three we have s04 s14 s24 up to s84 so you can see the unlike the um binomial model where the size of the array adjusts by one here with the trinomial array the size of the the vector is adjusting by two so if we have eight values here in this array we or we have nine values here we have seven here we have five here so five one two three four five we have three here they are reducing by two each time we come back and we've got to, to define that in terms of our coding um i've taken a simple um stock price tree here so i've taken values again these are the Broadly, the temple values more or less, except instead of using 15,000 steps, I'm using nine. And nine steps means we have 10 values going across. So we have zeros one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the zeros one. So we have 10 values going across, and we have 19 values i is at a maximum at the penultimate node we have uh, 19 of these so 18 plus the zero or one makes 19. okay in terms of our valuation then we define the stock price initially as being 100 okay and that 100 is coming from where that 100 is coming from the original stock price that we've defined here as s and then the stock price can either go up by u, so we take that 100 multiplied by u, it can stay the same, so in other words we're multiplying by 1, or it goes down by d, we multiply by d. How do we estimate u and d? Well the values that I have here for u and d are consistent with the Wikipedia formula, so I might just take those up again, take a quick look and paste them in so pause okay so i've taken these from wikipedia the, these formulations and you can see that u here is consistent with the u provided here uh, d is just one over u okay so i've defined d as one over u pu is equal to well what's in the brackets here in the parameters parentheses um, I'm just following in line with um, the formula that's here. So basically the PU, the PD and the PM, PM are estimated using these formulas here. Okay, in the next video I'm going to just tease this out a little bit further and provide a little bit more explanation in terms of the trinomial model.